Good morning. I'm Lucinda Gabriel coming to you live from Blanc Sablon, Quebec this morning. It is 8.35, February 2nd, 2020. So this morning, I want to talk to you about the subject of spirits of religion and denominationalism. It's a big word. Um, so yes, the Lord put this on my heart lately and, uh, and really burdened me to share this with you, to speak about it. And, um, and I'm also reading this amazing book that I want to share with you too and, and kind of, you know, share what it says in this book. So you will see where I'm, I'm kind of getting this from and it's just like amazing. So first of all, I want to say good morning. I see some people are coming on this morning. Welcome, welcome. So uh, yes, my subject this morning is the spirits of religion and denominationalism. So what exactly does that mean? So I'm just going to, go ahead and, and share a bit with what the Lord has been telling me lately. You know, um, when we read the Bible and we have the Holy Spirit guiding us into all truth, He will show us things and point things out to us that we've never seen before, that we would never find on our own. And that's the amazing thing. So one of the things that, you know, the Holy Spirit pointed out to me lately was this. In Matthew 16, 13 to uh, 18, I'm just going to kind of read it out and tell you what it says. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I, that I, the son of man, am? And so they said, well, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Now, I've heard this before, and um, I've heard different interpretations of what it meant. But what the Spirit told me a few weeks ago, just really like, it was, wow. And I was like, wondering, why are you telling me this? Because he kept saying, Peter, rock, Peter, rock. So to go look at it and read it. And then, anyway, he said to me, what it meant was, I just wrote it out here. The rock on which he's building his church is those to whom the Father who is in heaven has revealed the true identity of Jesus. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. So the real church, the rock, is those that have received the revelation. And when I got that, I was like, wow, that's amazing. Now, like I always say, don't believe a word I say. Go read it for yourselves and ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth. And keep asking, seeking, and knocking, because he will. And I want to share too about when I first uh, had the revelation, because that's how it happened for me. I remember it was March 1st, 2018. I was watching a YouTube video, and there was this guy called Nathan Wheeler sharing his, his story, all his testimony, which was like last 10 hours, but I knew God wanted me, to, wanted me to watch it. And then at one point, he's talking about this pastor who's up front, and the pastor says, and for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And when I heard those words, I knew in my heart they were true. It was the truth. God the Father had revealed it to me in that moment, and I knew I did not need to look anywhere else for any more proof of any greater love than God. And I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew. Huh? And I knew that no one could ever, ever be able to convince me of anything else from that point on. So that's how God reveals that to us. So that's the rock on which God is building his church. And so right now, I'm reading this amazing book. So I'm just going over my notes. If you see me shifting my eyes there, I'm reading this amazing book called The Heavenly Man. I'm only three quarters way through it. And it's just blowing my mind because it's the true story of a Chinese believer named Brother Young, who was uh, in jail and tortured for his beliefs. 
and suffered persecution like we can't imagine. He's still alive today and he's 61 years old. He's living in Europe. And, um, and so he shared, he shared his testimony uh, about everything that he lived there. And um, so many things about his testimony, about the book that struck me. But one of the things was about his mother in the beginning, about how his walk with God started and started with his mother. She was 20 years old and um, somebody had shared the true gospel with her and she believed. And one night she was going to a meeting and the whole group was arrested before she arrived. And communism was taking over and Christians were being uh, persecuted and they weren't allowed to practice their faith and this is still going on today by the way and so they have what they call a state church where people are allowed to go into this building you know out in front of everybody but it's not true the true faith you know it's just a, it's a religion so um, and they're not allowed to have Bibles so I don't know what they do in these churches but they're not preaching the real Jesus so uh, as the years went by, Brother Young's mother, um, she fell away. You know, she, she forgot what she learned because nobody was really practicing the faith anymore. She got married. She had five children. And her husband developed lung cancer. And they had to sell all their possessions to get treatment that finally did not work. So he was dying. And she was like so discouraged. She was one night she was on her bed and she was crying. She was discouraged. She was desperate and suicidal and thinking, how am I going to survive with five children, no husband, no work, no money. They were like really, really poor. And uh, she couldn't see how this was going to happen. And she, as she was crying and sobbing, she heard this little voice say, Jesus loves you. And she got down on her knees and she repented to God. It was like everything she had learned came back to her. She repented to God. She rededicated her, her life to Jesus right there. And she called her children and told them what happened. And they, they too committed themselves, uh, committed their lives to Jesus. They got around the bed. They put their hands on their father. And all they knew to say was, Jesus, heal our father. Jesus, heal our father. Jesus, heal our father. And they said that all night. And by the next morning, it was much better. And the following week, he was completely healed. Now that was faith. And that's the kind of faith that I would like to see today. They were, and this is still, I mean, this was happening in, in the 70s, you know, when he's telling the story, right? I believe it was like maybe early 70s. And they were so grateful for what God had done. They invited all of their friends over and their family to share the good news. And they weren't allowed to talk about, you know, religion or stuff like that. So they got people to come over and the father would open the door and they were like, oh, you're, you know, what happened? You're well. And they would bring them in and sit them down and they would share Jesus with them. And all of them that came to visit believed and gave their life to Jesus because they saw the truth. They didn't have Bibles. They didn't have anything. They just had the proof that Jesus was real. Jesus was God and he healed them. And, and that was enough for them. And so uh, so in a way, you know, this is the good news that, that spread through their area in China. And Brother Young's mother did not know how to read or how to write. They did not even have a Bible. But Brother Young's mother was the first preacher in his village. And many people came to the Lord because of her simple childlike faith. It's just absolutely amazing when you read it. Brother Young was 16 years old at the time, and he desperately wanted a uh, to see a Bible, at least to see it. And his mother brought him to an older man up the road. And the old man said, you know, you have to pray to God for a Bible. So he sends him home and, uh, and Brother Young prays for 30 days and nothing happens. And then he goes back to see the old man and the old man said, you have to pray and fast, like really, um, you know, really cry out to God there and, and ask for it. So he went home and he ended up praying and fasting for 100 days, just eating one bowl of rice a day until finally he had a vision and he had a vision that two men were showing up at the door with a Bible. And right after that, the door, you know, there was a little knock on the door and these two men arrived with the Bible for him. And it was the first miracle that God did for him. And his, his faith just like 
you know, really exploded after that because he knew that God would hear him and listen to him and, and answer his prayers. So when he received this Bible, Brother Young memorized the whole book of Matthew in a month. I mean, just amazing. I mean, I can't barely remember a scripture, let alone a full, uh, a full book. And so he memorized the book of Matthew and, and right away Jesus called him out and brought him all over the place to share the gospel with different people. And that's what he did. And, um, and then he was arrested three times for his faith for sharing the gospel, he went to jail, he was really badly tortured and everything, but not once did he ever deny his faith or God or denounce his brothers and sisters, you know, that he was teaching. And, um, and anyway, he, he, God just miraculous did things for him. And he even like told them one day, like he would hear the voice and, and uh, the Holy Spirit said like, okay, now go. And he, and he opened up all the doors. He walked out of jail and nobody even saw him. And it was like a, a really, um, like a, a penitentiary, you know, where, where it was really locked up. So anyway, amazing things that God did for him. And one of the other things that really struck me about this book that I'm reading is when he talked about the unity in the churches or the lack thereof. And so when I talk about churches, it's not the churches like we think about them today, because like I said, this was all underground. These are home churches. And, um, and when, you know, the communist party took over and they closed down like the mainstream churches, if you will, 80% of the people fell away from their faith and only 20% were left and went underground. And we're going to see this kind of thing too, you know, in our day, in our own areas. So, um, anyway, they had these home churches and God spoke to Brother Yun one day and he says that if I'm going to pour out my power, my spirit on, the, on China, there needs to be unity in the church. And you see, this is the interesting part. He was talking about how the Western Christians started to send Bibles to China in the 1980s. And they also started to put their own other books in the bags with them that came from a particular denomination's theology that focused on certain aspects of God's word. And for example, the booklets said that they should worship in a certain way, or that you must speak in tongues to be a true believer, or that you had to be baptized in Jesus' name instead of the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which basically is the same. And there are also the doctrine of the role of the women in church. And all of this brought confusion and disunity to their church. The house churches began to separate, and instead of only speaking of Jesus, they spoke against each other who had different views. That is what we are seeing here today in America. You know, Canada, America, it's the same thing. And um, Brother Young called this the spirit. I mean, when, he, when I saw it, it was like, yes, this is exactly what it is, the spirit of denominationalism. And we also know this as religious spirit. Okay, when someone holds so tight to their beliefs that it chokes the Holy Spirit. So God had spoken to me about a month ago and said, he said this, do not follow man, follow me. We have to follow the Holy Spirit above anyone or anything. And to follow the Holy Spirit, we need to spend time with him, to know him and to hear his voice. Yes, because the Holy Spirit is a person. It is a him. Yes, you should be hearing its voice and speaking to you, leading you and guiding you. And when you read the book, The Heavenly Man or the book of Acts in the Bible, you see how the Christian's life is, was truly meant to be lived and that it was led by the Holy Spirit. We are supposed to be led by the Holy Spirit. We're not even supposed to make any decision in our life without checking in with the Holy Spirit to see, is this what you want me to do? Tell me which direction you want me to go. We should always be checking in to have um, to have guidance from the Holy Spirit. Never do anything with them. You know, and I'm just going to share with you a few verses um, that came to me as I was, you know, writing this up yesterday to share with you. In 1 Corinthians 7, 27, 23, it says, You are bought at a price. So for believers, okay, believers, you are bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. That's what it says. And in 1 Corinthians as well, 1, 1.10, 1, 
this is also for believers. It says, now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no division amongst you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. And in 1 John 2.27, it says, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. So he's talking to believers. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. Basically, it is saying that you don't need anybody to teach you. You have the Holy Spirit. Okay, so someone who has the Holy Spirit will always tell you, don't believe me. Read it for yourselves. Go see. Pray to God. Ask the Holy Spirit. Seek for the truth. Because if we have the same spirit, we should get the same answer. Right? Whereas someone who has a religious spirit, they will say, uh, they will always say that they have the truth. Never mind what you read or what the Holy Spirit is telling you. They are right and you are wrong. That, my friends, is what I call a religious spirit. Okay? Very important for you to know this. So be very, very careful about who you listen to and, and what they're saying. And I know some people might say, oh, well, you follow TLR and all this stuff. TLR is not a church. It's not a religion. It's a movement. And if you have, like I said, if you have the same spirit, you will get the same answers. So it's, it's important to, to always, you know, go to the spirit. So spend less time uh, watching TV and doing worldly things and more time in prayer and in the word and ask God, ask the Holy Spirit, ask Jesus to guide you into all truth. So on a final note, um, when the first disciples got together, they didn't do Bible studies. No. They they shared what Jesus was doing in their lives. They shared their possessions, making sure that everyone in their in their in their community was cared for. They shared communion together. They had fellowship. They worshiped and praised God uh, together. They shared the gospel with others. They baptized new believers. They prayed for one another. They drove out demons, they laid hands on the sick, and they got well. They simply made disciples. So just something for you to think about this morning is we are not called to make the nominations. We are called to make disciples. Okay? That's my message this morning. And I hope that, you know, it touched you and, uh, and that it will inspire you to go and read the word for yourself. Okay, like I tell you every week, don't believe a word I say, go read it, ask God to lead you into all truth, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth, that's what he's there for. Never listen to anybody, even me, you know, just go and seek for the truth for yourself, because if you seek and you knock, the door will open and God will answer you, but you have to be seeking to find it, you know, and it makes me think about, I was seeking back in 2002, which was you know, 18 years ago, and um, and and I didn't find the truth then. And and I asked, you know, like why, why, Lord, didn't you, you know, show me Jesus back then? You know, I was going through a dark night of the soul, but the, you know, the Lord knew what I was going to go through. He knew that whatever he, I had that time, I would take it and run with it. And because of that, many people ended up following me, and I became the best-selling author and all this stuff. And um, and, and uh, because a lot of people followed me, when I finally found the truth, a lot of those people are following me to the truth, which is wonderful. And I'm so grateful for that because almost almost every week, somebody writes me and says, either I want to meet people that, you know, uh, that I can learn more with, or I want to get baptized, or they're announcing to me that they have been baptized. So praise God for, for leading people into all truth. I pray for you all the time, every one of you, that you too would find the truth and that truth would set you free. So that's my message this morning. Uh, it's, it's for, you know, unbelievers and it's also for believers to, to, you know, wake you up a little bit, to give you a little push to go and read your Bibles and, and ask, you know, God, what do you want me to do? What's, what's my purpose? How can I best serve you? And, uh, because it's not about us. And time is short, my friends. Time is very, very short. And there's no more time left to waste. 
and we we have a, a purpose to go out there and to make disciples so that's what i want to encourage you to do this morning so that's it i pray that you have a wonderful day god bless you all and uh if you have questions write me if you want to meet somebody that can uh, teach you more or connect with someone anyway just let me know i'll see what i can do to hook you up or or answer your questions if you have any all right god bless and we'll see you again next week